Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are from. It is currently October 21st, Monday. I hope everybody out there had a fantastic weekend. I know the weather has definitely been a little bit rough, but trust and believe we're going to have a break. It's going to calm down a little bit, but unfortunately ramp back up yet again as we have our secondary severe weather season. And surprisingly, hurricane season is not over just yet. Um, we will talk about that in just a bit. But beginning with the severe weather aspect, which we do have a slight chance a severe weather stretching all the way from southern central plains to the northern central plains and this is all going to be part of the sandstorm system that sparked up the severe weather in new mexico extreme flash flooding emergency the other day in roswell and we had just went through that town got some beautiful photo and videos of the photogenic supercell that was up near fort sumner new mexico but to say the least definitely a dangerous situation for the town of roswell my prayers go out to all of y'all i hope y'all have an easy recovery and everything works out okay but y'all can see the upper level system right kind of northeastern Colorado on the triple point up here this is the same system that was down here over Arizona that caused the severe weather snowfall in New Mexico and Colorado and you can already see convection beginning to blow up as of right now it's currently 12 18 p.m. central time we already got two severe weather statements one for the panhandle of Texas and one going all the way up to southern Nebraska now like I said this is mainly going to be a conditional tornado threat today guys for today it's uh, more so an isolated 2% chance might possibly might be upgraded to a 5% chance later on today but but the main severe weather threat is going to be hell and damaging winds. Other than that, the United States is pretty, pretty dry, pretty quiet. Um, we've got the tropics to talk about, which was category one. Um, Hurricane Oscar has now been getting downgraded to a tropical storm, and that is forecasted and model guidance is showing that's going to eject off to the east northeast into the atlantic ocean and die out from there so no threat to the united states for this one we will be diving into some of the models so without further ado let's see what the data shows taking a look at now tropical storm oscar which is just centered to the south of Cuba and is moving west northwest at about three miles an hour. So very slow, not in a rush, but this will continue to accelerate and pick up speed over the next 24 to 48 hours as it ejects off to the west northwest. And here is the latest model track guidance of now tropical storm oscar you can see it's expected to continue moving west northwest and then make a sharp turn and bolt into the atlantic ocean and this is going to continue to stay the trend i don't think this is going to change much the models have a pretty good agreement that this will begin to stay a fish storm as it continues over the Atlantic Ocean and not really impact anybody. But um, here is the model intensity guidance of Tropical Storm Oscar, and most just keep it out of Tropical Storm. Um, like I said, this is a done deal. I don't think it's going to be anything crazy as far as Tropical Storm Oscar goes. Quickly jumping over to the Pacific Ocean, you can see here the remaintenance of Nadine, which is now forecasted to redevelop in the Pacific Ocean. The National Hurricane Center is giving it a 90% chance of development um, south of South south of southwestern new mexico showers and thunderstorms continue to show signs of organization with a trough of low pressure located a few hundred miles offshore of the coast of southern mexico environmental conditions are favorable for additional development in tropical depression or storm is expected to form within the next day or so while the system moves westward at around 15 miles an hour away from the coast of mexico so like I said, guys, this is going to stay a fish storm. I don't expect it to impact the United States whatsoever. So this is not going to be a topic we'll really talk about. Just wanted to show y'all and give y'all an idea of what happened with Nadine and where it's possibly going. Alrighty, taking a look at the latest GFS ensemble member runs. This is a whole bunch of different models put into one. It's going to kind of give us an idea of what could potentially happen. Where, where you know, where a low pressure system could form. And this is um, Wednesday, October 30th. You can already see we're starting to get signals down here in the Southern Caribbean. And as we push this in time, those signals get stronger and stronger and stronger. And notice they really don't move too much. They kind of just stall and sit there and continue to grow. And that's kind of been the trend. But whenever they do begin to move and make their direction the trend has been this got two options it's either going to go west 
or most the most likely option it's going to go northeast as of right now that's been the trends um some of the models run has been showing that it could potentially bolt north towards the eastern united states after it makes that northeastern track but it's really going to depend on the high pressure system that's going to be set in place over the eastern united states um, that's going to make a big difference and that's going to really act like a steering current for any tropical development this time of the year just like oscar it's getting deflected it um high pressure systems keeping it away from the u.s you got a lot of troughs cold fronts coming down this time of the year and it just really it's really hard for a tropical system to enter let alone the gulf of mexico um, or impact florida or the um, eastern part of the united states but most model runs like i said keep this storm stalled out down there it grows and then it finally moves off to the um, eastern part of the atlantic ocean you had a couple of stragglers here trying to you know bolt north make it into florida but like i said the timing and the placement of this is really going to make the big difference and dictate where this thing goes but as of right now if, if i'm in florida if i'm living across you know the eastern part of the united states I'm not worried about this thing. I'm watching it, but it's no concern as of right now. Alrighty, now taking a look at the latest HRRR high resolution rapid refresh model. Um, this is going to kind of give us an idea of what could potentially play out severe weather wise for today in the Kansas, southern Nebraska area. Um, Oklahoma is a little bit of a conditional threat on the north side of Oklahoma. Um, not too sure if uh, severe weather is going to develop down there today. It's really going to depend on if the cap can break and if the ingredients can come together. But this is around 4 p.m. Central time today. Like I said, as a recording this video, time now is 12.52 p.m. So by the time you're watching this video, storms may have already been fired up. But um, a couple different cells start firing up based on this one model run um, just to the east of Dodge City, just to the south of Great Bend, Kansas. We got these two individual cells, and this one just south of MC Cook, Can or um, sorry, just south of MC Cook, Nebraska in North Kansas. I think these are going to be the couple areas that we really got to watch. Um, as far as looking at updraft helicity tracks, it doesn't show anything crazy. Uh, moving in time, it shows that potentially one down there could be something strong. And like I said, these two cells down here, but it's really going to depend on how things evolve and develop. And another thing we can look at is CAPE, our convective available potential energy. This is going to kind of give us an idea of how much energy is in the atmosphere for these storms to feed off, right? It's like food energy for them. And we're, you know, we're pushing roughly anywhere from you know, 1,500, almost 2,000 joules per kilogram. So plenty of energy in the atmosphere. Um, as far as moisture and dew points, that's another thing that we can take a look at. This is going to pretty much tell if there's enough moisture in the air. And I mean, there's seems to be plenty. We're um, in the low 60s to upper 50s out here, which is uh, pretty decent for this far north. Um, the moisture feed is pretty good, obviously a lot more further south, but um, it's just going to depend on if storms can develop. So um, like I said, I will continue to keep y'all up to date, guys. I appreciate watching the videos. Sorry if they've been a little bit shorter than I, you know, I'd like to make longer videos, go a little more into detail. Um, just been super busy with life, just trying to get everything figured out, especially for this April and May coming up, this next tornado season. I definitely want to be out there and trying to chase more. So like I said, guys, um, if y'all like the video, Go ahead and like it. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, comment down below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It's free, guys. Um, believe it or not, it, it helps out tremendously. Um, it's free. It's without y'all, we wouldn't be able to do what we do as far as being able to go out there, um, storm chasing, and just helping out the community after the fact that everything you know, got destroyed in any given town, which, you know, hopefully it doesn't happen. Hopefully, you know, this tornado season is going to be, you know, remains on the plains over, over open fields and, you know, no one gets affected. That's the best case scenario, but I'll keep you to continue to keep you up to date guys. Um, like I said, tropics are unfortunately not done yet and severe weather is now ramping up. So stay tuned for that guys. I love y'all. I appreciate the support and I'll see y'all in the next video.